Hi, this is Kyle at Pure, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to initially set up Azure VMware solution for eventual use uh, with Cloud Block Store. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we're going to create a resource group, which will contain all of the various components that we're going to build in this video, as well as subsequent videos. Uh, we'll just give it a descriptive name. We'll call it Flash Array Solution VMware, uh, and then we'll say US West, because it's going to be in the US West region. So with that, uh, we're not going to assign any tags to this, so we'll go ahead and create our resource group. So that's uh, step one. Um, now that we can hop into our resource group, uh, what we'll go ahead and do next is we're going to add a virtual network, uh, otherwise known as a VNet. So the VNet is going to serve as our virtual network, uh, basically a method by which uh, Cloud Block Store will be able to communicate with itself, as well as the other components that we deploy uh, within this resource group. Uh, we, obviously, we want to give this VNet a name, and then we'll put it in the same region uh, as our resource group. Uh, we'll then define an IPv4 address space. Uh, dash 20 should be fine for our intents and purposes. Of course, you can define additional address spaces and make or make the, it a lot larger or smaller um, than this dash 20 that we're using here. Uh, we also need something called a gateway subnet. Uh, subnet. Um, that AVS requires that in order to be deployed. And then we'll also create a separate subnet uh, for our jump host, which we'll create towards the end of this demo video. Those are our first two subnets. Uh, those are good. And next we'll go ahead and go to security. Uh, we'll just keep everything as a default here. Um, and again, we're not using any tags for this demo. So everything is validated. And with that, we'll go ahead and create our virtual network. Um, virtual network deployment has succeeded. Um, so that's really the only two pieces that you need before we can actually start to deploy uh, Azure VMware solution itself. Um, so we'll go back into our resource group now. And we can see our, our VNet is there. Uh, we'll go to add and then we'll search the marketplace for Azure VMware solution. You can see there it is, the first option. And we'll go ahead and create it. It's worth noting that at this point in time, uh, as of November 2020, you do need to contact Azure support. Uh, otherwise, you'll get that red notice there in order to get allocated some ESXi hosts, uh, which we have done for the US West region. Um, so the first thing you need to do is give your cloud a name, AVS US West. Um, we're going to use the trial SKU since this isn't going to stick around for too long. Uh, give it a complex vCenter as well as NSXT password. And then you need to give it a private address block that's a dash 22 network. Um, and then we'll go ahead and use that VNet that we created previously. That address block is important to note that that should not overlap that VNet that we just created or any other IP addresses that you have in use in your Azure subscription. Um, that will kick off our deployment. Uh, it takes typically anywhere from eh, about two hours to deploy. So while we're waiting for AVS to deploy and build those ESXi hosts and clusters, vCenter, NSXT, uh, we'll go ahead and create a virtual machine that we will use as a jump host to access AVS once it has become deployed. Um, again, we'll deploy it into that same resource group recreated. Um, into the same region as well. Um, we'll go ahead and use Windows Server 2009. Um, as we can see, there's other uh, VM sizes. We'll just go ahead and use the default since this is a quick demo. Uh, give it a username and password, and we want to be able to RDP to it. So that will necessitate um, a, a public IP address as well as opening the RDP port. Um, we'll use a standard HD, which we just saw there. Um, since we're not running a lot of IOPS with this, um, go ahead and check our networking, which is good. Put it on that default subnet, and then we'll leave uh, a lot of this other advanced stuff, as well as tags and, uh, and management as default. And then we'll go ahead and create our uh, virtual machine within Azure. So we go ahead and click Create. It'll take a few minutes to deploy this virtual machine, which we'll skip to the end of the deployment. Now we can go to this resource. Um, and when we go into this VM, uh, if we go to the connect tab, that will, and we go to the RDP option under connect, um, we can download that RDP file. And then when we click on it, that will let us use uh, Windows. I'm on a Windows box, so I'll use Windows RDP um, to connect into my new jump host. Sorry, I got to blur out uh, some of this credential information and IP address stuff. 
Um, so that will enable us to connect in. And as we can see, our jump host, which will have access to Azure when Azure completes, is now up and running. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next video where we show some AVS uh, setup stuff. Thank you.